He moved from Hong Kong to Canada when he was 14 years old. When he came to Canada, he had no money and didn't speak English. He started and failed at 13 businesses before finding success. He's Dan Locke and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume 12. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, build self-esteem. Here's the number one success secret that no one talks about and no one shares. This is something I've learned from my mentor, Dan Pena, the $50 billion man. Self-esteem is the foundation of all success. Now, I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about pride. I'm not even talking about just confidence. I'm talking about self-esteem. Now, what is self-esteem? Self-esteem is something that your parents didn't give you. Think about when you're growing up, when you want to do something, when you want to take some risk, what did your parents, what did your friends, what did they tell you? You're not trained for this. No one in our family is an entrepreneur, or you don't have enough education, or you don't know the right people. Just be content, right? Be happy with what you have. Or, hey, son, I want you to be successful, but not too successful. I want you to think about what is holding you back, the goals that you have that you want to achieve. Why don't you do what you know deep down that you are supposed to do? Why don't you take that risk? Why don't you start that business? What's stopping you? Because you lack self-esteem. Now the next question you might have, Sifu Dan, how do I build my self-esteem? Let me give you a perfect example. Let's say you have a friend of yours and he tells you all the time, hey man, let's, let's hang out. I say, okay, you know what, let's hang out, let's go grab a drink, let's go, you know, go for a hike. Every single time he says, okay, let's do something, he would cancel on you. And that happens again and again and again. So let me ask you a question, if that happens all the time, how would you feel about this friend, this person? Would you trust him or her? Not so much. The reason you don't have high self-esteem because you have a lousy track record. Meaning, how many times you promise yourself that you're gonna do something, but you don't? How many times you make promises to yourself and you don't deliver, you don't follow through on those promises? And guess what? When you do this enough, for enough times, for enough years, you have low self-esteem because you know, you know yourself. Well, yeah, I guess I wanna do that, but I'm not gonna follow through, I'm not gonna make it happen. And that's why your self-esteem is low. You don't even believe in yourself. Little things, big things, you make a promise to yourself and you deliver. Rule number two, be driven. Successful people are incredibly driven. How driven are you? Now I'm not talking about you being a nightmare to work with or, or bowling other people. I'm talking about you pushing yourself to get results. It's your personal drives that turns your ideas into actions, into results. It is your personal drive that keeps you going when things get tough. It is your personal drives that enables you to bounce back from disappointment, from setback. So how driven are you or are you lazy? Do you procrastinate? Do you put things off? You see, for the first five years of my career, I didn't take a single day off. I was working 10, 12, 14 hours every single day for five years straight. Why? Because I was driven. I was driven to provide for my family. I was driven to prove other people wrong. And today, I am driven by my mission. How driven are you? Rule number three, don't be negative. You are walking down the street and suddenly you hear <laughs> and suddenly you see a red Ferrari vroom, just drove by. What's the first thought that comes through your mind? Comment below. No filter, no edit, just comment below. What's the very first thought that comes to your mind? My guess is, chances are, he's an asshole. Who does he think he is? So cocky, so selfish, probably a greedy bastard. Actually, you know what, probably it's not his money anyway, it's his daddy's money, or if it's a lady, it's a woman, oh, that's a gold digger, right? All these negativities, guess what? That's you judging other people. My question to you is, how do you know? How do you know? It's all made up stories in your mind, right? And you say, oh, he's not that good, she's not that pretty, 
He is not that smart. You're judging other people. You're projecting your own insecurities, your own values onto other people. How do you know that man is not a hardworking man? How do you know he's not a good husband? How do you know he's not a family man? How do you know he's someone who's worked 20, 30 years to get to where he is at this point? How do you know? You judge, you come to your own conclusions before even talking to the person. You see how your mind works? How are you gonna be successful? How are you ever gonna become rich if that's the image that you have for people who are successful? Rule number four, do what works for you. You see this on social media very often. People talk about the morning ritual or waking up very, very early in the morning because all successful people, they all wake up in the morning. So do you actually need to wake up early, early in the morning to be successful? That's one of the problems with people don't know how to filter advice. Now, are there a lot of people who are successful who wake up in the morning? Absolutely. But are there also a lot of people who are successful who don't wake up in the morning? Absolutely, right? But it's this propaganda on social media that people focus so much on that. Success has to do with your habits, what you do on a consistent basis. And you have to know what time in the day that you're the most productive. For some people, it is early in the morning where there's no distraction. There's people are still sleeping and you go through the day, maybe you go work out, maybe you do meditation, then you plan the day, that's fine. For some people, they don't wake up early, they wake up whatever time and then they work late at night. They're more like a night owl. I'm more like a night owl. I find that I'm the most creative late at night when it's quiet, when there's no noise, right? When there's not a lot going on. I find that that's, those quiet times sometimes become my thinking time. So that's what works for me. I think you need to find what works for you. Doesn't matter whose advice you're getting from, it could be from me, it could be from anybody else, but you have to know yourself enough. If it doesn't work for you, if you get up in the morning, you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired, you're sleepy, you're exhausted, and for many, many days, and Dutch just like, it screws up your biological clock, then it doesn't work for you. And that's kind of one thing that I gravitate towards Bruce Lee's martial art, as you follow my work, you know I'm a martial artist, that Bruce is always about you finding your own path. That's why he said, his martial arts style is not a style, it's a set of principles. You define what works for you. Absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is eventually on your own. Also, if you wanna have more confidence, check out my 254 Confidence Series. It's free, the link to join is in the description below. After you practice martial art, you develop this natural self-confidence. Not cockiness, but you develop this natural self-confidence. Rule number five, practice martial arts. The fact I like martial art because it, it's it's not a physical sport. True. It, it's a mental sport. That's right. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of time, well, you can play uh, tennis or you can play golf. Mm -hmm. You can play all that. It's nice. Yeah. But martial art is a sport where, let's say, I'm hitting a heavy bag. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't matter how good you get, mm -hmm. you're competing with yourself. Right? That's right. And it's all about eliminating eliminating your own uh, defect. Mm -hmm. That I could throw a punch. Mm -hmm. Well, I can throw a punch, but can I hit it with speed? Right? Can I hit it with power? That's can I hit right. All that I need to learn and mm -hmm. practice and do all that stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, I love that part of it, and it's a never-ending challenge. It's never good. It's never good enough. You find someone that can do it faster, bigger, like stronger. Right. For sure. So I love that. Aspect. There's always someone that's going to be better than you. And I can go super philosophical. Right. Where I can not have about physical, I can just go all philosophical mm -hmm. with it and I can do that extreme. Mm -hmm. and I love that crazy deep dive of life and philosophy. Excellent. I love that aspect of it. Love it. Rule number six, don't make excuses. You can make money or you can make excuses, but you cannot do both. An excuse is nothing more than a well-planned lie. You see the excuses ego says, well, I, I can't afford it, I, I don't have money, right? Or oh, 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 that's too far, or oh, oh, that's too, too difficult, too, I, I don't have enough experience. It's always I can't, I can't, I can't, or I don't know how. You see, you could have a million excuses why you cannot do something. You only need one damn good reason why you must do it. Rule number seven, don't fear failure. One of the things that holds people back that I believe is fear. 
fear of failure. I want you to ask yourself this question. What would you do differently if you knew you couldn't fail? Would you take more risk? Would you be more aggressive? You don't need to be afraid of failure. I'll give you a perfect example. When I was making an offer, when I was driving people to take an action and investing in themselves, when I'm speaking to a, to a group of audience, maybe 100 people, 200 people, 500 people, on a good day, I might have 10, 15, 20% of the people in the audience, they will take action and they will invest in themselves. So you would say, wow, that's a 20% success rate. Yes, that is a 20% success rate. But the other way to look at this is basically I fail even on a good day, 80% of the time. I would get a rejection. 80% of the audience would say no. In marketing, when you are running traffic, when you're doing your marketing online, let's say you get a 3% conversion, meaning 100 people this is your website, 3% will take action. They say your conversion of 3%. 97% would say no. 97% would not buy and 97% would not take action. Well, guess what? You have a 97% failure rate. You see, anyone who achieves any kind of success experience failure on a consistent basis. Rule number eight, overcome adversity. Whatever you're going through right now, I know it may be very, very difficult. And it almost feels like, like the end of the world, in your only the world, right? In your only the world. I want you to imagine that you are now three years, five years, maybe even 10 years from today. And now you're looking back at what's happening right now. And you ask yourself some of these questions. Is this as bad as I thought it is? What can I learn from this? I know it's very difficult. You say, I not learn, learn nothing from it. There's nothing I'm learning from this. No, what are some of the lessons you could, you could take away? What are some of the value you can get from this, right? It's going to be the most difficult one. What could you be grateful for that this happened to you? And you're like, oh, come on. Come on, Dan, there's nothing to be grateful for. This accident happened, this emergency happened, or something tragic that just happened. Like, there's nothing that I could be grateful for. I know, but if there is something you could be grateful for, what could you be grateful for? Ask yourself those questions. Suddenly, that would give you perspective. And when you come back to reality, where you are now, you're looking at scenario, okay, if it's 10 years from now, maybe it's not as bad. Imagine even things that happened to you in the past, the adversities that you experienced in the past. Think about that. It could be two, three, five, 10 years ago. Back then, that felt like the end of the world. That felt like it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you back then. Now, looking today, looking back, back then, how do you feel about those incidents? My bet is this, it is not as bad as you thought, and you learn a lot from it, and probably you find something that you could be grateful for. That, that adversity turns out to be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to you. Rule number nine, master the skill of communication. Back then when I was going to high school in Canada, in Vancouver, uh, I had no friends, right? Because I was very much uh, an introvert. I was very shy because I couldn't speak a language. When I first arrived to this country, I couldn't speak a word of English. So I was very afraid to talk to people. Of course, when you're afraid to talk to people, no one would listen. And I remember I would try to communicate very, very even simple language, simple words uh, with my classmates. And they were like, what? What are you saying? Pardon me? And I would have to repeat the, the same thing three, four, five times. And because they just won't listen. And eventually they pretty much just lose their patience. They're like, I, I don't, I don't, I can't understand you, man. I can't understand what you're talking about. So they don't want to talk to me because they feel it's, it's, it's very troublesome for them, right? So I know for a fact when you see what I do when I'm now communicating with you that I can speak, I can command an audience and our fans you know, from all over the world that communication, this is a learnable skill. It is a what? It's a learnable skill. This is something that you could learn. 
I could go from someone who is a totally introvert, shy, no one would listen to me, to now that people would listen to what I have to say, right? And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is be yourself. Number 10, the fake ego. Have you ever met someone that you don't know them, but the minute you meet with them, they just have this weird kind of vibe that you don't trust him or her, or they feel very fake, that you feel like, oh my God, they're just so fake, they're so superficial, that you don't make that connection, that they're not genuine. Or have you ever met someone that just the minute you meet with them, you make that instant connection, and then there's that trust, there's, there's that bond, that you feel this person is sincere, the fake ego. Maybe that's you. Maybe that you're very good at putting on this mask. You're very good that in one circumstance, you can be this person. In an other scenario, you become a different person. And then here, you become another person. And before you know it, you've done it for so many years, you don't know who you are anymore. You don't know which one is the real you. Which one is the real you? You've lost yourself. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Be yourself. I would rather people hate me for who I am than love me for who I am not. So don't, don't use the fake ego. You don't need it to be successful. Now I've got a special bonus clip from Dan on how to put yourself first that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Go. Question number one, where do you need to stop being negative? Number two, what is working for you that you need to do more of? And number three, what excuse are you going to stop making? I don't want to rock the boat, right? As long as everybody's okay, then, then I'm okay. You try to please people too much. You always put other people first. Nothing wrong with that. But sometimes in life, you have to put yourself first. Even when you're flying on an airplane, you gotta put on your own, your own oxygen mask first before you help someone else. Sometimes in life, you have to put yourself first. You have to be a little bit selfish so you could be generous. Hi, this is Dan Locke. If you're a fan of Evan's work, if you want to know exactly how to model my success, I want to invite you to join me for a special online training. All you have to do is click on the link below. You can join me for absolutely no charge. So click on the link below and I will see you in class. If you want more Dan Locke, check out the top 50 rules video I made on him. The link is right there next to me. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. If your life stinks, it's your fault. We take responsibility for our own action. Oh, money is not that important. Money doesn't buy happiness. Oh my goodness, let me think. 